Hello, it's Dr. Clark here again. Um, I've had a few requests from students wanting to know if it's possible to export raw data from LabChart um, yeah, to be able to use in Excel or Prism or any other program. And of course you can. Uh, raw data is uh, very easy to export. Um, there's just a window up here. Go to File, go to Export, and you can export uh, as a, a text file, a datapad file, um, simple data file in the AD Instruments format to be able to import into a different AD Instruments program, MATLAB, all sorts of various uh, formats. But for the purposes of this, um, what we want to do is we just want to export one channel. We've got uh, CO2 measurements here, respiratory CO2, and we've got the end tidal calculations uh, using the formula that I showed you in another tutorial. And we want to export uh, the numbers from the start, there we are, the start of the experiment on the left, to the end uh, of the exercise period, so the start of the rest period here on the right. My recommendation here is actually uh, using LabChart or LabChart Reader to delete any of the data off the screen that you don't want to export. It just makes a life a lot easier. So in this case, I'm just going to select from this point to the start of the file, hit the delete button, and it says, I'm oh, sure, yeah, I'm not going to save it, so that's fine. And then I go to the end of the file, and I do the same. So this is the end of the rest period start of the rest period, sorry, I'll select all of that, press delete, and now I've just got the data I want. So this is uh, very simple now, we select the data we want to export, and we could either select it as we've done here, or we could select across the bottom as you've seen previously, but uh, for the purposes of this, that's absolutely adequate, so it's automatically selected the data. We go to file, and we go to export, I'm going to save it as this file, which is the BSC experimental data, b2.dxt. I'm going to put it on my desktop and press save. And automatically it's selected just a channel. You see, that's all I've got, channel 8. None of the other channels are selected, and that's because I put the black box around the channel. If I put the black line underneath and selected all the channels, I could have then chosen uh, which channels. But I want channel 8, so I'm just going to press OK. The current selection is what I want to export. I don't want to clip values if they're out of range because I know these are all in range, that's fine. And this is the key, um, this down sample. Um, if you leave down sample off, it exports every single data point. Um, this file was recorded at 1000 hertz, so that's 1000 samples per second. So that's going to make a very large spreadsheet and make Excel probably fall over. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to down sample it by 10,000. That means it's going to be reducing the data points to one every 10 seconds. Okay, so that means that it's going to choose a point and a point and a point. This is very different from doing a bin, which we've done on the other experiments where we average five second increments over the time course. This is just choosing individual points, and this may be useful uh, to give a representation of the data. You may want to reduce it to just 1,000 and then plot it, but I'm just going to choose 10,000 just to make the file a bit smaller to use in Excel. And you can choose whether you want to export the time, comments, and event markers. Since I know that these data points will be every 10 seconds, I don't actually need to export the time, but I will do just to show you what it looks like, and I don't really need the comments or the event markers, so I'll just leave that as it is and press Done. That's it. Saved very quick. So then I flip over to Excel, which is running in the background, and I can drag and drop that file just off the desktop into Excel, and there are, there are all the data. There's not many of them. There's only uh, 100 and something rows, because it's obviously um, reduced it to every 10 seconds. But you can see it's done it in increments of 10 seconds here in the time. It's gone from 2.3 to 12.3 to 22.3, etc. And that's kind of irrelevant for our data plot. So I'm going to set that to zero and this one to 10, because I know they're 10 second increments, select these two, and then ask it to expand the series down to the bottom. So let's give that a little wiggle, and that's going to go all the way down to the bottom. Wait till it gets there, and then drop that off, and now we've got 10,060 seconds worth of data. Um, I'm going to delete this bottom line off, because it's saying to me that it's a, a non non-data point, clearly it just stopped sampling at that point. I'm going to go out to the top and now I'm going to select all of these data, go to insert and let's just do a scatter graph um, just for the sake of argument. Excel has to think about it for a bit and there we are, it's plotted a scatter graph get rid of him, uh, over the time course and you can see there's a, 
an increment here. Of course, the scatter is showing the variation in the data, and we saw that in the lab chart data. There, the odd spike you can see um, all over the data set. But in Excel now, um, it looks fairly nice. Of course, it's plotted it in this uh, gloriously horrible Excel format, and there's really not much uh, in this short period I'm going to do about that. I am going to change these to circles, given half the choice. Um, so I'm going to choose a circle, and I'm going to... Uh, can I change the color? Yes, I probably can, um, but I'm not going to bother. It doesn't seem to want me to do that, so I'll leave that as it is. Now I've got circles, they look a little bit nicer. And then I'm just going to plot a, a line of best fit, just because I can, uh, just to show that, those data. So, you know, this this could be um, this could be presented. Um, I don't know uh, what you'd want to use it for, but it's just an example. Uh, I think that's just percentage because it's not formatted correctly. But there we are. So you get entitled CO2, a linear relationship, and you can you could show those data. It's just a good way of showing off some raw data. Okay.